Okay, I think, I think we are live now. Um, Ross, welcome to another exciting bootcamp webinar. Um, amazing. So, Ross, uh, today we're going to cover a um, couple things. Now, but to start, we're just going to have a brief discussion on what is Taxum's role when it comes to, you know, making your making sure your operation runs smoothly, efficiently. We're going to then start talking a, a little bit more because we briefly covered this yesterday, but we're going to talk about how you manage or how we manage jobs and tasks within the platform. We're going to talk about team management, access rights and features that your team should or not have access to. And toward the end, we're going to talk about AI reporting, our you know, relatively new feature that we've seen a lot of comments uh, about in our community pages, a lot of suggestions, lots of ideas. So we're going to try to let you guys, well, give you an idea of what the feature is. And we'll, we're also going to give you a couple of sample reports you can start using uh, for your practice. All right. Let's get right into it here. Uh, Russ, I, I, you've, been, you've been using Taxton for a couple of years now. Um, and I know your team is your team's in the system. Can you remind us, uh, just for the, the ones that did not join us yesterday, how, how large is your team? We have uh, 15 uh, staff right now. All right, amazing. And uh, can you can you tell us um, a little bit about what was your process for adding your staff to the system and kind of onboarding them uh, and helping them understand their roles and what they had to do in the software? Sure. Um, so we we currently, you know, we use Taxstone for for our document management, um, and so so we're we have all users in in Taxstone, and we use it for. You know our work paper preparation you know and our tax preparation I mean, we use it in our our bookkeeping so so it, you know we we have to fully train our our users to use tax dome and understand uh, the workflow and the and the pipelines to move uh, their job assignments through the program um, and so you know we have to extensively train our staff to to use tax dome and uh, so each time we, you know, we hire staff, we'll we'll go through and, you know, usually we mirror staff with, you know, one of the other uh, people at their level, and um, they'll work along with them and show them how to to work through the pipelines. And then we usually usually hold weekly meetings in Taxdome and and go through staff assignments and go through also new features. Uh, Taxdome seems to come out with new features uh, at least monthly. And so we try to go and cover those uh, new features as well as things we're trying to accomplish with with workflows and the pipelines um, and, and just paying attention to what's going on, what other users in the community are doing. And and because um, there's always just seems to be things that, you know, people are, are you know, learning to do in tax tome. And, and so we're trying to learn from other users as well. Amazing. Thank you. Um, I I. I know what I do a lot with with you know the, the prospects that I work with is we I do we do a lot of uh, group trainings and sometimes we do this uh, by role at the office right so if we're, if we're working with the tax team we try to look at the workflows that are for tax uh, we try to look at what they'll be doing how they'll be completing the tasks you know changing the statuses things that are that are you know that are essential uh, in the software so you so, and they and they, we also of course teach them what the what the back end um, processes for when they do things so so for example if a tasks uh, tasks are assigned a preparer prepare goes to the task list they hit the complete uh, status button and then that will change something potentially in a pipeline right so so that of course is very important and uh, uh, Russ uh, do you have uh, I'd like you to, to, to tell us a little bit more about different roles that, that um, you know you have in your office you have administrative staff you have preparers reviewers um, are do you have your, your entire team is in Taxdome at the moment? Yes, exactly. Ever we have all staff in in Taxdome. Uh, perfect. What are some of the things that your administrative staff does mostly in the software? They just keep up with you know try to keep up with uh, what you know what the progress is made is being made in the in the jobs or what are the primary uh, use of the software for them, for example? Um, you know, the administrative staff will will help with um, setting up clients, um, new clients in in the in the software. They'll help with um, you know um, scanning documents, um, getting documents um, in into Taxdome. They'll help with uh, 
I'm communicating with clients as far as with questions about how to, you know, if they do have questions on how to e-sign documents and, and, the, and the final stages of tax returns as far as signing documents or, or, you know, how much to pay on tax returns. So if clients have questions um, that are, you know, sometimes the admin people will handle that and sometimes, you know, that will, that will come to the CPAs. But, but so the admin will, you know, kind of help on the, you know, a lot of times on the front side and the and the back side of, 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 of you know the tax prep process awesome i think this is also uh one you know one question i want to ask the audience because you know if you if you're if you're joining us today that means you are uh you know 90 percent of you are probably already using workflows uh within taxum so workflows um i'm gonna say relatively recently right have had uh, um a, a revamp on the design and when you click jobs or tasks now Right there's a there's a new view in which you can uh, visualize comments or see descriptions of your jobs. Russ, um, are you using currently descriptions on jobs or comments? You guys, um, how are you? How if so, how are you using it to let's say keep things documented? I'm sorry, I, I missed that question, Edgar. Yeah, no worries. Are you are you currently um, uh, using the job comments or task comments to document anything uh, within your workflows? Uh, yes, we are. We're we're using uh, the we're using that, and we're using along with uh, the notes, the, the comments and notes, um, and the at features, uh, ex you know, extensively. Um, those are, you know, those are very nice, you know, and you can get those both in your inbox as well as in your emails, and so they're great to communicate, you know, with with other staff, um, you know, to see where you're at on 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 jobs as well as communicate with. Yeah, and, and we're using them for various things, you know, maybe how we're going to deliver a tax return or what, you know, to ask, you know, status of where a tax returns at or, you know, what, you know, what our open items are on tax returns, um, you know, what we're doing on extensions, things like that. So we're, we're, we're using them, you know, for, for various things on tax returns. Amazing. Thank you very much. Now, I, I, I see some of the questions here in the uh, from the audience. Eric is asking if the pipeline that we showed yesterday is going to be available in the library. It will be available in the in the marketplace soon, Erica. We will give you more details tomorrow. Uh, still getting you know some some a couple of things work out with the team, but it will be available. Now, um, Michelle was saying that she doesn't fully understand jobs yet. Now, now I want to take advantage that we had this you know that this question came up to just uh, again share my screen, Russ, just like yesterday, and um, it's gonna just quickly here. You should be able to see my screen now. Let me, let me just switch here really quick. All right, I'm going to go to the same um, the same pipeline we had yesterday. So I'm going to log in here with my with my dummy account, go to the same pipeline. The screen is on, correct? Just want to make sure the audience is able to see the screen. You guys can react to uh, that would be great. I see some reactions. All right, amazing. Thank you. Amazing, guys. Now, we go to the same pipeline. And now, just a just quick recap on, on workflows, right? pipelines for the ones that are not using it which i which i know uh you know there's a couple of you that are trying to understand the workflows still at this stage pipelines are just a process that you follow at your firm so uh, pipelines could be you know your tax prep process your client onboarding process your uh, bookkeeping monthly process right so what um russ I, I know you you went through this training with your team so what 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 did you do or what examples could you give the audience so they understand pipelines and jobs better um as as far as just understanding pipelines and jobs give me give me an example edgar yeah so so you know how for example i see right pipelines being a process that i follow uh step by step so my tax prep pipeline for example consists of an initial stage i do a kickoff you know communication where i send my clients uh, an email or a, or a message mm -hmm. and then i perhaps send an engagement letter. Then after that, I, I send an mm -hmm. organizer. So those are the steps I follow for my process. Mm -hmm. What I'm calling a process is really my pipeline, right? So sure. that, I, I would just kind of use pipeline and process interchangeably, but the job itself would be, you know, what I'm getting paid for to complete. So if somebody, if I'm, do, I'm doing somebody's 2024 individual tax return, that's my job. That yeah. Much. And I think that, you know, when coming from the world of, you know, most, firms use some sort of practice management system 
before that were used to projects and tasks. Explaining what a pipeline is um, was was very difficult in the beginning, you know, because it's it's not you know tax domes not just projects and tasks. So I I always try to explain to to my staff it's it's like going from two dimensions to three dimensions. That's what I usually say, and because you're you're doing just way more than just projects and tasks, and that's what that's what the pipeline um, allows you to do. You can you can do so many more things, and and so I don't look at it as just it's it's phases of of the job. Um, I, I look at you know, in in this case, I think there was you know, in in there's 16 phases of this of this uh, pipeline, or I think is what we had in here. I, I know that's I think that's what mine is, but but um, so I look at it as 16 phases of this thing that we can do various automations in it. Um, so. Uh, it's just, you know, so it's that I've always struggled with how do you describe because it's 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 another it's another thing on top of, <laughs> of, of a project. And so my my because my staff will say, well, what because they try to translate it to what our old terminology was. Everybody tries to translate, you know, what's a pipeline in compared to what is, you know, a project and or what is a job, you know, because for us, project means job. That's what that's our old terminology was project. And we, you know that's what we call job now, you know. And so it's, 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 it's way more than you know anything we previously had. Absolutely, yeah. No, I, I, I went through this myself. You know, I still, I still go through it sometimes because uh, there's always these, you know, these different ideas that I hear from uh, from prospects that you know, want to build processes for anything. Uh, yeah, job could be just anything really um, that you you're, you're getting paid for to complete, or that you want to track its status, right? So yeah. if I want to track the status of my returns, well, my returns will be the job. Um, but yeah, excellent. Now, I I I want to I want to just briefly um, again recap uh, what we talked about yesterday. We went through a couple of a couple of different you know features, and uh, some of those features were automation and conditional automation so this pipeline in particular has a couple of stages that use automation and uh, uh, just for the ones that were that weren't here yesterday we talk about the importance of having the tags in your software having those tags assigned to your clients so then you can use those tags within your workflows to well have your clients go through a specific right set of stages uh, and, and of course, when they go through those stages, they will trigger specific automation based on those tags, right? So those those were the kind of key components we went over yesterday of just you know that you need to have set up before setting up your conditional automation and workflows. Now, Russ, um, for uh, j just to kind of exemplify how you would then use the information on pipelines, you were telling us yesterday that you are more of a fan of the pipeline view. Right? You like using the pipeline a lot. Um, but would you say your staff uh, prefers also the pipeline view or are they using the table uh, jobs view more? Um, you know, the, the job view is probably because of our old system was much more of a table format. I would say that, you know, this, this format would, would probably be the, the format that the majority of us use um, also because we're not using a um, combined tax pipeline the table format here this is going to this is going to let us see uh, multiple you know jobs and and able to filter this you know the way we want to see it so if you want to see your 1120s and your 1040s together you can you can do that um, but i typically like i said yesterday um, I'm, I'm typically on one monitor going to have you know the table view and then the other monitor <clears throat> i'm going to have the the pipeline you know view because I, I i really like to see it you know and i think that's how you teach yourself the program because you you really want to filter so that you're seeing the exact same thing on in in both formats and and you really learn the program that way i i believe and that's yeah that's exactly where where i wanted to get was um okay you have tons of data because the workflows have potentially thousands of jobs uh, within them. Um, and when I say workflows, yes, I saw you know, somebody asked about if, if I'm using workflows and pipelines, uh, the word interchangeably, yes, I am. Um, pipelines have tons of data. You know? And so you need, to, you need options to you know, be, you just you know, to make yourself um, 
you know, easy, the, the process of analyzing your data. And the filters are kind of your, your tool to do this. Um, sure. Russ, I know, I, you, I know you... If you showed right now a little bit, like you've laid this out a little bit more um, than you than over the last couple of days, if you could just show just how powerful, like the job assignees now, and just and just showed how filter by a few people or show the presets, like you can now filter this um, by several different people. So I think I've set myself up one here. So now just show just mine um, and you can quickly see what's assigned to me. Um, and then you can see there, and that's a filter that I saved in, in the file here. And and, um, and you can scroll up and, and see, these are just the returns that, you know, Edgar had assigned to me. And, and they're just the 1040s there, there could have, I could have, I just filtered for the 1040s for me, but I could change that to 1120 you know, S's or, or any return that I wanted to, to look at. Um, and so it's, it's very powerful. So staff can use it to, to really, you know, filter down for their, their tasks. And then of course I could remove job assignee and see all the 1040s. And so the, the, the filtering is very easy. It's very intuitive. Um, and, and you can get down, you can see everything, or you can really drill down if you're, if you've got your tagging set up, right. And you've got your, as we were showing yesterday, if you've got your, you know, your assignees working through on uh, your variables where the assignee is getting to the right person, you're, you're really going to be able to filter your, your pipeline. Exactly. Um, I want to just kind of piggyback on what you said about using the filters. Uh, we, you know, we said yesterday, guys, using the presets is is just an incredible tool. It's going to save you tons of clicks. If it's not a you know it's not a lot of clicks you have to do to to create a filter, but just having those presets. Spe spe more, I'm going to say more specifically, if you are an admin or, or someone who's over just overseeing the the you know progress that's being made. Um, well, you know, having those presets is going to help you see you know just like Ross said specific jobs that meet specific tags, for example, uh, 10 to 1040s assigned at Ross or 1040s assigned to somebody else, right? Uh, or kind of a combination of assignees, right? So this is all available here in the jobs table. I saw somebody asked if this table was customizable the, or, or the columns could, could be reordered. Yes, they can. If you click on the on the right hand side of your page here, the, the little gear icon should be on the top right corner of your, of your table. This is gonna allow you to uh, reorder the columns and this same functionality is available in in uh, the majority of the tables of the software so if you go to the clients or accounts that's going to let you do the same thing always look for the gear icon here on the top right corner i'm going to make a small pause here um to look at potential questions one second michelle wants to see a sample of, of the of the jobs that you have here uh, that we have here i'm going to click one of the jobs here so you can see the example michelle uh, this is just a job, you know, th that is that is currently living within the tax prep pipeline. So I'm, I'm actually going to go there and click the job so you can see the details. Um, these are the tags we, you know, we discussed yesterday. Uh, there's there's a couple of things here, like the time budget that you might not have in, those, in your software because some of these features are in beta. Um, but we'll discuss more, you know, more these more in detail tomorrow once we uh, once we talk about put, uh, the upcoming features. Question here for Russ. Uh, Kaylee is asking, Russ, how does your firm use the notes feature? Is is there any part of it that you found specially helpful? Um, sure. So we're using the notes feature. Um, we do we do uh, pen the notes um, to um, the jobs at times. Um, we're we're using the notes to track things like. Um, specific to to the job that we want to you know to to track um from year to year on on a bookkeeping job you know you know specific instructions we're also you know we'll have word files that we will you know specifically link to the job you know so so we're 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 using both notes and and word files that we're that we're linking to to job cards notes feature i think a lot of you know the, there's a ton of functionality behind it it might you know it might not seem like it but when you uh, when there's a note that you need to create for a client um you could do a couple of things with it so i'm gonna i'm just gonna create a note here so you guys can see what happens i'm gonna hit it in the new button on the top left and create a note in the in the bottom left corner of my screen 
I'm going to click, I'm going to select, sorry, one of the clients that are currently in my pipelines, like David Hernandez. And um, this is going to take me to the screen where I can link the, the note, right? So I can create a note saying, well, this, you know, I don't know. So say David sold his primary residence last year. And uh, and when, when, I, when I save this note, right, uh, I can then go either back to my workflow, my, my pipeline view, or I can just go here with, I'm I'm currently within David's file, so I'm, I'm looking at his jobs or his tasks only, and each client has a workflow page. So this this is gonna this is gonna show me where he is in my tax prep pipeline. I can then go here right and then link the note, for example, to the job. It's gonna give our staff or whoever's working on the job if they're looking at the jobs table or if they're in the pipeline view and they click the job. So give them a direct link to the note um, itself, right? Uh, notes can also, you know, can also you can also use notes to add comments for your team. You can you can mention your colleagues to send them a notification about your note. There's a lot of potential there. I hope that helped uh, with the question, Kaylee. Thank you for that. All right. Okay, amazing. So let's go let's go back here, guys, to the workflow real fast. We're gonna talk. I'm gonna talk now briefly. Um, about handling just how, how to handle uh, Russ clients that are kind of falling behind. Can you uh, remind us, please? Because we I know I know we talked about this yesterday, but remind us: Are you using the reminders option uh, within your workflows at the moment? Re reminders on client action items. Yeah, um, absolutely. So we're yeah we're using reminders and, and engagement letters, organizers, um, usually. With engagement letters, we're usually reminding, you know, try to remind every, you know, seven or 14 days organizers were, were doing reminders. Um, and so so throughout any 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 request that we're making, we're going to put, you know, some sort of reminder on there, you know, every so many days client signature requests. We're going to put, uh, you know, a reminder, you know, on the, on there as well. Fantastic, and and you know a lot of people don't know this, but reminders are also can also happen on the firm side, right? Um, there's a couple of ways to to trigger reminders for the firm. Mm -hmm. One of the you know one of the simplest ways is using the, the tasks, right? And tasks and due dates that will actually you know send you a uh, either an email or an inbox notification to let you know what's due or what's what's almost overdue. Uh, you are using that too to kind of notify your staff about their their uh, to dos, correct? Yes. Amazing. Now, just to show you guys also like how this is set up in the pipeline, I'm gonna click the edit button in my in my pipeline here, and then just show you an example here in my kickoff communication. I am sending a message to um, to some of the clients, right? Clients that meet the uh, or have the tag 1040 and digital client. Why? Because this is a message that goes uh, through the portal. So. My clients could only reply to the message using the the portal itself, right? They have to log in uh, to then reply. If I scroll down here and, uh, and then click the Edit Automation, you see that some of the automation items, like sending messages or sending an engagement letter or an invoice, have this toggle option, right? This toggle could automatically be on if your template, because when you create templates in Taxum, you also have the reminders option there. Um, but yes, you, if you turn it on, your clients could get email reminders about your automation, right? So, uh, and I was and I was just about to to mention the fact that of course you don't want to bother your clients a lot, so you have to kind of find that balance. Make sure your clients don't get a lot of emails. I'll say they don't start uh, ignoring you. And uh, the um, the one thing, Ross, I'm sure uh, a lot of people would like to know about is how do you control the um, the number of emails your clients receive because I know you do this a lot and you're you're very careful about all those different touch points that you have with clients. So, what are some of the things you do to to manage that and make it appropriate? Well, you know that we're trying to space out. You know the you know the the first year we sent out our organizers and our engagement letters um, and our kickoff uh, email right together. And of course, that's that's three emails and notifications, and we had, um, and then we had follow up reminders attached with all of those, which meant if they didn't immediately address it, they you know within 
14 days, they were getting three, then they were getting three, then they were getting three. And so we learned quickly on that we had uh, we had to turn some of those reminders off and just we didn't, we just needed to get them to the portal. And so we, we restructured how we were doing that, you know, and we spaced those uh, out. And so we moved our kickoff communication into December um, and in our engagement letter a, a couple of weeks later. Um, and then our organizer a couple weeks later um, with, with just fewer reminders. And, and we no longer send a kickoff email. We just do a communication in the portal. Um, so, so we've just gone to, to, to fewer because, because, the, because of the reminders. Um, and, and we're only going to remind, um, you know, uh, not so many times. You know, we're not going to remind every three days um, because of the number of emails. That they, that they were getting amazing and we learned, uh, learned that year too so <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and uh and and here's here's one piece of advice for the audience too because i know this is a new feature as well um it was released a few weeks ago and not a lot of people are aware of it but now you can you can well quite easily uh, manage the types of notifications your clients get right so if your pipeline is sending you know, a three auto, you're sending three automation items at once, maybe because you're sending an, an organizer, engagement letter, and another uh, chat message all at once. Your clients will get multiple notifications for those items, right? And sometimes you, you just don't want that. Now, um, if, you if you go to the clients list now and you go to the accounts list, uh, click more actions, you'll see this edit, login, uh, notify, email, sync, toggle. I'm uh, sorry, this option here. Now, when you click it and you enable notifications for clients, like the second option here is uh, to notify clients by email about you know whatever the the pending activity is, could be an engagement letter, email, chat, anything that comes through the portal, they get emails about right. When you enable this, you can customize the notification uh, or the, the types of notifications they get right. So if you just want the clients to get uh, to get notified, for example, about the uh, message you're sending, right? Maybe you just you just want to you just want to send a notification for the message that lets them know they have a proposal and organizer um, assigned to them, so they can fill it out and, and sign the proposal. But maybe you, you don't want to send three emails for the three items, right? So, uh, Russ, uh, does your team use this to sort of you know kind of manage the notifications your uh, your clients get? Um, yes, we do. We we absolutely do. And and one of the things that we found helpful is that um we go to this feature and we go to the filter here and um we look for clients that are toggled off uh for notifications and every now and then if clients are toggled off for it's going to be down at the bottom for i, I believe for note the filter for notifications um and um if they're if they're toggled off um we want to see that um because they're not going to get any notifications. They, you know, they won't get notified if you send them a chat. They won't get notified if you send them an invoice or an e-signature. And um, you don't want that. And so we had a few that got toggled off for whatever reason, and they weren't they weren't getting those. And so we we realized we needed to get them toggled back on. And so we we pay attention to that. So sometimes you might have toggled them off for whatever reason, and you 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 need to get you need to get them toggled back on. And so that's a, that's a filter that we just had to run here last week, and and uh, we had a few clients for for whatever reason we toggled them off and and didn't get them toggled back on. Absolutely, and and you know there's there's a couple more a couple more uh, filters here. Definitely start looking at them, guys, uh, to to do your bulk actions and uh, potentially save you time. You don't want to go into each client and start notifying them, or sorry, uh, enabling notifications. Uh, one by one, because right right now you can just do this in bulk, and of course manage those preferences uh, for the notifications. Now I want to highlight also that this changes right. You you can make them while things are happening in the pipeline, right? So if you know you know down the down the line you're going to be sending a I don't know organizer notifications, you want to make sure those preferences are on so that the clients get notified about it, right? So just what Ross said, make sure you uh, you will, your filter to find the ones that are not being notified, enable, and when you enable, make sure the preferences are set up correctly so that the clients get the, the right yeah. notifications all the time. All right, guys, I wanna make a quick pause here because I saw a few, I saw a few questions about workflows. Question, question for you, Ross, here. I think this is interesting. Mm -hmm. During 
during tax season, right? How, how do you space them? How, how do you space this, uh, this uh, notifications you send to the clients? Well, we're we're only sending those notifications. You know, we you know usually every fourteen days at right at the right at the beginning. So we're starting with you know our our organizers. You know, every fourteen days, right at the beginning of of, of January. You know, um, and our and our uh, engagement letters. You know, right right around the same time. And so we're we're trying not to we're trying not to go much past that um you know and hopefully most of our clients have uh, will sign and we're we're having that taken care of by mid-february um we're, and we're not having to do a lot of notifications then then once we get past you know <clears throat> march 1st then we're looking at we'll, we will start doing some notifications for extensions and we're you know requesting information we'll do some chats to start requesting information uh from clients for uh extensions um if they haven't uh sent us any information and we'll do that through chats um and that will kind of be a, a a blanket uh information you know a blanket chat we'll we'll filter that and basically say hey for clients we haven't heard from so we'll have tagged them that that uh you know that they're they need an extension and that we you know haven't received any information we'll move them into that status and then we'll send them a blanket hey we need your to send the information over to us and um and then from there we'll start individually communicating with them if we haven't heard anything usually by around the 15th of march uh, thank you very much i saw also something uh very interesting here from vanessa i think it's you know worth mentioning it uh ross do you change your communication strategy at all for someone with multiple businesses uh plus an individual uh return uh, she's saying some of the clients get overwhelmed and just ignore the, you know, communications. Yes, um, we do. We, we, we will still communicate with them on the individual side, you know, with, with, uh, you know, the same engagement letters. Um, but if, if they usually, if they've got more than five businesses, then, then we're going to, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna inundate them with, you know, engagement letters you know so we're we're, we're going to most likely at that point you know revisit how we're going to you know give them engagement letters if we're going to you know send those you know upload those and do those into one portal you know so we've got a handful that you know three or four or five big clients that we're, we're doing 30 or 40 engagement letters and we're going to handle those through one portal all right awesome we'll still, we'll still deliver them individually you know we'll still deliver all those returns through individual portal portals but the engagement letters we're probably going to handle those you know I, i'd say on those we're, we're handling the engagement letter as one big engagement letter that lists all the entities um and so it, it'll list whatever 40 entities and the client will sign that in a kind of a we'll have a combined portal that will just do the engagement letter for the combined you know 50 entities and then it's just the kind of really it's the engagement letter entity and overall the engagement kind of the combined entity for for mostly you know where we're communicating maybe with their bookkeeper where she might give us the the, the trial balances and that kind of thing and, and then we'll we'll still work on them individually and then we're delivering them individually through the portals and they're signed and, and such individually and we're doing them you know individually but it some of that's case by case exactly um and well a second part of the question was you know sometimes clients um i want to address that part uh where you said vanessa about clients uploading everything into one account one of the one of the suggestions our community has been you know has been making for i think you know a while actually is um how you the firm when clients just upload everything into one account right when they have three four businesses um, it's it's sometimes difficult to do I think proper education. Just I mean, of course, you cannot take the time to educate every single client. Let them know exactly how they should switch accounts and upload you know upload documents into each and every account. So, what are teams doing? And just kind of this is a sneak sneak peek into something that's coming. You are going to be able to move documents from one account to the other. So so super super right. easily uh, to help you guys save time. So hopefully that will be not much more of a you know super super big problem. Although of course, um, I think you'll never really uh, completely prevent it, right? And clients will still do it. 
uh, some clients will do it, but of course you'll have the tools to at least. Yeah, and, and we just move them. You know, it, it, we just that's that's the case where you go to the it's it's simple enough to go to the Z drive and and uh, copy and paste or cut and paste and you know move them and get them into the right spot and and so for the most part you know you're you're going to have a few of those where clients upload to the individual portal or to the business portal their their personal docs and and uh and so we just we just move them to where you know we want them and we 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 do the we do it by entity um we 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 track and do our all of our work by by entity on our side all the do everything's documented by entity um, and so if we do anything, you know, like in a large, like we said, in a large, you know, where there's a lot of entities, it may be just so that, you know, we're not going to force someone to go sign 50 engagement letters and 50 separate portals, but they're, they're most likely, I think we maybe have one or two clients where we'll have, let them sign 50, 88, 79s in, in, in one portal. Uh, otherwise for the most part, they're, they're going to, you know, they're, you know, they're they're going to individual portals. I think we you know so we may maybe one or two exceptions. Awesome, thank you, Ross. And there's two more questions for you, Ross. So if you can just kind of walk us through uh, also, some of the audience is curious on how you use uh, currently Taxdom organizers. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I I know you have a stage for in your in your pipelines sure. for organizers. How do you use them currently? Uh, Ninety percent of our clients are using uh, tax domes uh, organizers. Uh, we've we've got about um, right around eight or nine percent that we tag with a tag that says Ultra Tax Organizer. Uh, that's our tax software, and those are clients that specifically requested our our tax software organizer. That you know their clients have been with us long term and and want to continue to use the old organizer. And so those clients, we tag them that way. And right at the beginning, uh, at the tax season, great thing. We just, you know, run a filter and tax dome, uh, and the account list. And for that fill, you know, click on the ultra tax tag and we see exactly those clients. And then we just go run those in ultra tax and, and we mail those clients, their, their organizer. And, and so it's real easy for us. And, and so, it, it saves us a lot. So it's real easy for us because used to, you know, we, we had to print and mail all those organizers and it was a way, you know, we saved quite a bit and, and, uh, and, and so many more clients are now, you know, uploading their documents and completing the tax dome organizer. Awesome. Thanks. And lastly, Russ, it's more of a question on how you, you know, your process, uh, your administrative staff, you mentioned, uh, they'll scan client documents into tax dome. That's part of your process. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that look like for your team? You know, scanning and and, every, and you know doing doing all that, and how does that integrate or affect your your pipeline structure currently? Sure. Um, well, typically, the administrative staff will, and I, I guess I should should back up on that. Typically, um, an accounting person, the accounting staff, or one of my accounting people will, if it's tax documents, they're going to get the data first, and they're going to they're going to organize it and figure out what they want scanned or not scanned. And they're going to get it in a format where, you know, we're not going to scan a bunch of stuff that, you know, the client gives us that we don't want scanned. And then they're going to give it to someone to scan. So it's going to, it's first going to get, you know, vetted, you know, where, where, you know, where the admin people aren't making that call usually. Um, and so at that point, then it's going to go to admin. Now, sometimes it's clear the admin people know what to do. If it's bank statements, they know what to do with it. But, but sometimes on the, on the, on the tax side, you know, it needs to, it needs to be looked at first. And so then the admin takes it from there and scans it. Awesome. And then you, you do have a, you do have a stage for all of this, you know, the, uh, you know, the, this, uh, do you track it separately uh, when that happens, when there's, you know, documents to sign with your pipelines for us? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. There we were in that stage. That's kind of when, when it, if it's coming in, um, when it comes in, you know, from the organizer stage, if the client's in tax dome and it comes into that stage, you know, we'll get the notifications in tax dome um, that, you know, the client, the documents have been uploaded. And so if it, if it, depending on which op office it is, it's going to go to that task will be assigned in that stage to, to three, actual three different people in the office will get notifications. And one of those three will, any of those three can take it in one office, any of the three can take it. And so three people and they just, you know, whoever decides to grab it um, and uh, they'll look at the information. And, and a lot of times they're just looking at it to, 
they may just say, all right, everything looks good. And then they'll immediately manually, um, it's not an auto move. They'll manually at that point, they'll say everything looks good. Um, and they'll move it over into the preparer stage. If they think um, uh, we need information or don't do anything with it. And if it's a paper client, clearly they're going to go grab the binder or the, you know, the folder and, and look at it and then, and then um, give it to the admin team to scan. So, but, but they're going to, they're just going to kind of look at it and make sure it's really re ready for the preparer. Um, and, and if it's a simple client then then the preparer can, you know, we'll just grab it, you know, so it, it, you know, there's some, there's some judgment there, you know, there, you know, sometimes the preparer will just go grab it out of the box and, and, uh, and take it straight away. So, and, right. and, and, and move it themselves. So. Thank you. Thank you for addressing that, Ross. Very insightful. I think I think it's 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 uh it's you know we're gonna continue answering questions, guys. Thank you for all these great questions. Uh, I know all of you are, are curious on you know what what a Ross uh, Ross processes. We'll continue to answer questions in the Q and A. Uh, just before we continue, guys, we'll uh, let me just reshare the slides for a moment. And uh, okay, we just really quickly. All right, so we 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 talk about you know, the, the pipeline structure, we talk about how you can toggle on the reminders to make sure clients get notified about their uh, pending to-dos if they have something assigned to them. We talk about how you can also uh, you know, get reminded of, of your own to-dos. If you're a task, if you're a team staff member, you can get reminders by assigning you a task. And um, and we, we also covered briefly, I know a lot of you, you know, made a comment here in the Q&A that you don't have to notify the bulk editing or, um, bulk change on the notify toggle or notify option that is coming guys it isn't it isn't beta currently it will be it will be released very very soon so you will have it very soon in your portal and again that filter as well so you can you can filter by who's not getting notified it's part of the same thing so you'll have it very soon in your portal um, now we will continue something we we did not touch on yet is um, features that are specifically designed to well be available to, to to specific people at your firm to, let me explain a little bit further on this russ and i went you know before we went live on this webinar we were discussing actually something similar to this um we were discuss we were just having a discussion on whether or not your staff should be able to set everything up or change the tags or change the workflows right so being tags a very important component in your workflows, Ross. I know you, because you're using sure. conditional automation a lot. Um, what are some of the things that you just you know make available uh, for certain members uh, of your firm? As far as tags, uh, tags, or you know, could be something else, some other some other uh, components or areas of the software, maybe. Well, here here's some of the things that you know I would I would say that you know as far as the you know, just tracking and, and I would point out, um, Edgar, is if, if you were go over to say um, one of the go to the job schedule um, and, and some of the things that I would I would track and, and if you could share your screen and, and go go back into the jobs. Absolutely. And uh, let's just take, say, David Hernandez. Um, and let's let's just take this job and let's take it over into the preparer stage. Okay, let me move it. I'm going to move it here uh, by changing the stage. Okay, save and exit. This, of course, is going to ask me to trigger the automation. I am. I think I am going to do it. Yeah, let, that's what I was hoping to do. All right, let's just move it there. Okay. Oh. And so let, let's let's clear. Let's uh, look at let's take on that preparer task. And uh, let's um, you were asking me some of the things about like the job comments earlier. Yep. Okay. Let's okay. let's just let's click on that task. Absolutely. Um, and so so some of the things that you know you know we'll do in here is you know we the preparer can make notes in here and and so we'll, we'll we will sometimes make notes here um, and uh, and one of the things I wanted to kind of point out and and one of the things that's really nice in the program and we'll go through this but if you you can make notes here but let's go ahead and complete this task because I, I just want to show one of the one of the areas that that's really makes. The, the, the program's really nice to see. Let's go ahead and complete this and and progress it forward. Okay. Um, Hit complete here. All right, and then let's click on David's name there and go over to just the client itself and and go to the client workflow. Absolutely. Just go okay. to 
I'm just gonna share that other. When you click the name, of course, that, op that opens an, a new tab on the browser. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm gonna go to the, just jump now, to the workflow. Tab. What, what's fantastic about the client workflow is not only do you get to see the, the prepare return here and see that stage where the return's at on the, on the return, but you can see all the, the active jobs, the pending tasks and the completed tasks. So if you click on completed tasks there, um, you can see that task we, we just completed. So, so you can, you, from this point here, we can click on prepare return there and, and see any task that we've completed in, in any notes the preparers made, um, any, any comments that were made at the task level. We typically make our notes at the at the job level. Um, we we try to encourage our staff to to make notes at the and comments at the job level, not at the task level. So those are decisions we feel like you you've got to make as a firm. Where because there's so many places you can make your notes and comments and and everything. And so that's one of the things I think you want to make those decisions on, you know, where you want to make them um, and and where you want to do that. And and you have that flexibility. Um, and sometimes we do want like there are certain places where we on extensions we make our notes we we do want our notes at the task level on extensions and we've decided you know internally that's how we like because we want to be able to filter uh that way and easily go see that and so but but just normal other things we want we want that done at the job level um and so and so as you're going through and learning it and it's even though we completed this task we don't have this pipeline set up to auto move. So the, the pipeline still is in the preparer stage. Um, if you go back into the pipeline, so yeah. we, we, we didn't have our, we don't have this auto moving over to manager. So. Yeah. But, but the, the point, the, the point here is this is great. Actually, <laughs> this. Uh, the point is, yes, you have auto move on in certain stages. And if yeah. a task, you know, if there's a, you know, if you have proper automation in place, like what's happening in our processes, in our, in our, in our pipeline is, there's a preparer getting assigned, right? And we have a tag for the preparer on the client account. And that's that's who gets assigned. So when the job is, when they, when it's, if it's dragged manually into the stage, there's gonna be a task getting created for the person uh, who the tag corresponds to. Same mm -hmm. thing happens when the jobs auto move. So if a preparer completes a task and there's auto move on, right, auto moves on, it's gonna move to the next stage and the pipeline itself is gonna to wanna to trigger the automation specific for that, you know, those client tags um, when the job moves. So here, for example, it is asking us, it is saying, it is wanting to create a, um, a task for manager number three so they can review the tax return. Uh, and it is asking us because we, you know, we manually drag this over from the uh, engagement letter stage. It's asking us what we want to do with that engagement letter. So I'm just, you know, you can either move it as a, as a uh, incomplete item to the next stage, or you can unlink it, um, essentially marking it as complete or unrelated to the job. Um, but that's that, that's what the process would look like if you had auto move on, things move, and again the automation kicks in. Gotcha. Uh, could be conditional. So that was one of the areas we really use extensively is this this workflow view right here under the client. Um, so when my individual users really probably are working from from, you know, this screen quite a bit and working through um, the the that that view on the on the on the client screen quite a bit because um, they're working on the actual client and working from those workflows so that they can also see the other jobs that are open on that client as well. So if it's a if it's a business client, they're going to be able to see, you know, sales tax and bookkeeping jobs and, and tax returns and such. Absolutely. And and well, you know, we we discussed this as well yesterday, but um, you guys should definitely pay attention to um, account access if if necessary, right? I, I know for a lot of you, you just give access to all the clients, people can see everything, all the tasks, um, all the all the noise sometimes, right? And uh, if it works, it works. For I know I like you know filtering my views to see only my assigned work. So you know of course you know you can always filter here in, on the accounts list as well. I like also seeing the the column telling me how many tasks are pending for clients. So if I'm already I'm already filtering by let's say 1040s that are assigned to me, right? Uh, I can then go to the tasks for that client. It's going to take me to that view Ross is, is mentioning. Uh, taking you to the task and it needs to be complete. You can click it, 
add your notes, your comments, mark it complete, uh, change the status, and then that will in the back end have you know some sort of effect in your pipelines, perhaps moving the job to the next stage or triggering a status update on the client side, right? Um, but the bottom line is you're using the different views available to to just look at more relevant screens because uh, sometimes it's you know it's, it's difficult to manage everything from I'm gonna say a, a single table that has a thousand line items on it, right? Right. So, and, and and I think for beginners or, or for your staff, you know, so for for my staff, I think I feel like especially in the first couple years they're using it, and I think it's easier when you're doing it at the client level. It's a little less overwhelming than you know when you're doing it client by client as well. Fantastic, thank you. I'm gonna make a uh, quick pause here because we, you know, we're it's almost three minutes before the top of the hour. We um, we we're about to cover reports, guys. We're, we're gonna stay on for at least uh, I think I'm gonna say thirty minutes more. Uh, we're gonna leave some space for the Q and A. Before we jump to reports, go let's go over a few a few of the questions here that are um, that we have in the Q and A. Now uh, let's just see here, Russ. This is another question for you. Since you have over a thousand customers, how does how do you distinguish between clients with the same exact names? If you have cli three clients with the name Jam John Smith, how do you how do you uh, handle that? Um, well, because Tax Dome's not really linked or shared with, say, um, UltraTax, I can just put you know an identifier in 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 there in the name, um, and I can you know put something in parentheses after the name. Um, I'm using I'm using custom fields to what I'm using to put into my letters and filters and you know and such so I can identify it um, you know with with that but you know so I think that's but I don't know that I've got anybody with identical name I think I've got some juniors where I, I don't know that I've got anybody with identical names Edgar, you might answer that better than me. What, what <laughs> I, I've, I've seen different, you know, I'm going to go with, I like using the, the you know, last name, comma, first name naming convention. Um, I like using the, you know, sometimes identifiers like, you know, f you know, the Spinoza's family or, you know, different, just like, like what you said, right? There's not a direct link between your tax software and your, um, and your tax dump. So sometimes it's just as easy as adding some sort of an identifier um, before the client name, I've seen people add their IDs, you know, client IDs from the tax software, because you can search the client names in the global search bar. So it's it's just uh, up to your preference, but definitely add something. You know, if you have a, identical names. Yeah, um, I, I know. Like I've got my just because I've got a test account for myself, and so I know from me because I've got myself set up in my account list twice. Um, I just put you know in parentheses after my name gmail just so i know it's my gmail account and not you know my main account you know so um so i know you can just put an uh, but i'm not you know that that being said i'm not using the software to send myself engagement letters and and other things you know proposals and things like that so i haven't i haven't really thought of a workaround i don't know that i've got a john smith that i'm that, that was a <laughs> that i've worked through that Amazing. All right. All right. I think that's a good question. I'll have to get back. Well, tax is going to have to follow back up with you on that. <laughs> we'll have a better solution than I have. More about it tomorrow. <laughs> um, all right. So look, this is, I think, a very interesting one as well. We'll share a screen in a couple of seconds. But Russ, uh, tell us more about how you handle, you know, extensions within your workflows because you have a pipeline and in, in which I you know, saw a couple stages for extensions. How do you use those, um, or you know, or do you have a separate pipeline? What's your strategy there? Um, we do have uh, two um, phases that are at the end of our pipeline um, for extensions, um, and the those phases um, we have two tags. Um, one is extension needed, and uh, one is extension uh, filed. Um, those those two phases, those tags will get applied when we when we drag the the job into those um, phases, um, and and basically yeah. So so we we do have them in there. Um, you can what's what's great about Taxdom is you can move those phases you know 
during their during tax season you can move those over to you know before or after the prepare phase and then move them back during tax season back over to the right i i just you know move them over to the right because you know that's where we put them but we don't we don't keep jobs in those phases uh you know in our office once we file the extension we move them back into the stage where they where we want them to be where they should be if they're still in the prepare phase we move them back into the prepare phase um, so basically once we have the extension filed they'll have that tag and they'll keep that extension filed tag you know that's when the extension has been filed and accepted um, they'll keep that tag and then in our final phase which is e-filing tax return complete that phase is the extension filed tag will get removed okay because i want that tag to come off because i don't want that tag in there um on because that's an account tag and i don't want that tag on there for next year's return um i need that tag off because i haven't filed an extension for you know 20 i'm getting ready to be starting 2024's return um and you know i'm still working on 2023 so all my clients are have the 2023 extension filed tag and i don't tag it for i don't have a 2020 i just have extension filed tag um and so you've got to not only so you need an so what we do is we have an extension needed then we have an extension filed tag um and then we have it and then we remove that extension in the very final state so what what Edgar's showing there on screen and you don't have to do it that way that that's the beauty you can design it your own way so if you wanted to do it by year so if you wanted to go 2024 uh, needed um, 2024 extension filed and two twelve and then remove it. Um, you could do it that way, and then and then you don't have to remove or you don't have to remove it, you know, or remove it later, whenever. But that's how we don't put a year on it. We just that's that's our method. Um, but those phases don't have to be at the end like that. That's just that's how we've chose to do it, and then we'll move that. We won't leave them over there. We'll move them back into where we want them to be but but it's it's manual we you know there's we we don't we have to move those back into uh where they go back if they were on the partner review or if they were on um if they were on the manager we'll move them back into the right phase we're about to talk about reports so, so if you're curious about the functionality or you haven't had time to use it uh definitely stay on for at least uh, the next 20 uh, 15 minutes. We'll do a we'll do a short Q and A at the, at the end as well. To give, to give you guys a little bit more context on on the AI, you know, this is this is called the the our AI reporting tool. Um, to give my, to give you more context, TaxDome has tons of data in it. It has it knows when your clients upload documents. It knows when your clients make payments, when the clients don't make payments, when they sit too long on a pipeline stage. Right. So there's all of this data that exists in the software. So, of course, there was a need to kind of being able to use the data to do analysis on it or just understand, you know, understand what's happening with your firm. And so one of the problems our AI reporting tool is going to help you solve is just being able to analyze the data because you're I know you look at your pipelines uh, every year. You know, Ross, you do you've you've done multiple iterations of your of your workflows, and you've improved over time. Um, but without the data, without being able to confirm what the what the bottlenecks are, or what the you know areas for improvement are, well, that's you know that's a that's a slightly more difficult task, right? So, AI reporting is going to help you utilize the data to create tables, uh, graphs, and a couple more things that we're gonna we're gonna show you in a couple of minutes. Um, Ross, I know you you haven't really you know have a lot of time to look at the at the reporting but there's you know we were just having this conversation before the before the the webinar went live there's a couple of things that you look at in your you know from from your you know from your staff maybe that you know can you tell us a little bit about what you you know what you look at as far as reports go are you using you know uh, maybe maybe timesheets, maybe work getting done. Yeah, you know, we tend to we tend to look at um, you know total billings. We want to see um, you know we we tend to look at you know hourly you know staff hours um, you know billable hours versus non billable hours. Um, I know that's a metric that you know a lot of firms are are you know, not looking at, but we, we still one of those firms, I guess you would say <laughs> we're, we're one of those firms. Um, but, um, you know, I would say that, um, you know, 
the, the metric for us that you know we would like to to be able to see from tax dome is being able to to track our hours and in, in in you know to to see the the you know week to date month to date year to you know year to date hours billable hours non billable hours you know to be able to track that in tax dome easily see that as as we go absolutely thank you very much now i will actually share my screen again guys and um, i would i'd like to take this you know kind of opportunity to teach you guys how to how to build a super simple report but hopefully it will help you understand just kind of the the, the basis and kind of fundamentals of uh the tool and hopefully give you ideas for the future because i'm sure uh, you know our team's gonna make more and more reports available through the you know the the default uh reports that are currently sitting on your list so if you go right now i'm going to share my screen again but if you go uh, right now to the reporting tab on your tax them on your tax them portal and you go to the overview of this of this reporting tool you will see a couple of reports that uh, you know, that were built built by us okay so some of these reports have to do with time uh, like time utilization some of these have to do with the revenue so if you're using invoices and payments you'll see some some data there uh, the one that I want you to look at specifically right now is tasks and job assignments just because I, I, I know um, most of you have already at least used one pipeline or have used you know, some jobs, have completed at least a task or assigned tasks to your team, uh, to your team members. And this report is going to look at all of those all of those tasks that have been completed by your team and the ones that are in progress. So the, the particular filters that are in this report are the following. Now. This here is the name of the report on the top of the screen. The uh, then these here are the parameters and filters getting applied to the data. So here I'm looking at tasks that were created uh, within the last three months. So this is this is my uh, my criteria for the report. I am not filtering by client, but I could. I am not filtering by pipeline, but I also could if you want to look at spe a specific uh, process like your individual returns or your bookkeeping, your accounting, you can look at, sp at specific stages in your workflow, right? So if you're, if you would just want to look at what's being prepared, uh, how many returns were completed last uh, week, right? You don't have to do it over the last three months. You can do it by week. Um, so if that's something that you'd like to, you know, take a look at, this report is something you can take and customize. You can click this little, this, um, this parameters here. That's going to let you. That's going to let you edit the report so you can make you know you can make it slightly more relevant in your practice now um this particular report also has two different tabs now this is what we call a dashboard now this a dashboard is is essentially in the in the reporting tool it is a um a place where you're going to find multiple smaller reports on a single page right so really the my completed tasks uh view here is it's giving me actually one, two, three, you know, four reports that I can look at and that I can customize individually. So if I, if what I want to see is tasks getting completed each week, you know, this is something I can do and I can edit as well. Um, I can also get notified uh, every, you know, on a, on a recurring basis about, you know, about a certain report. These reports can be shared with your team as well. And uh, you know this is this particular one again is is about tasks, but you could as well use it for the jobs at the same time. I'm gonna jump to the in progress uh, task so you can see what's hap what's happening there. The uh, this this report is using the same parameters on the top of the screen, so it's just looking at the tasks that were uh, created within the last three months, and it's giving me a breakdown by account, by employee, so we so you know you have to you know, the capacity to understand how busy your employees are. And you can you can take this even, you know, you can take this even uh, to the next level saying, you know, if, for example, maybe you want to see the tasks that are assigned by employee, but you want to see it by date. You want to see it by week in the future because you want to look at your capacity for the future. So the data exists in Taxom. And as, and as, as far as the data is there, reports are going to be an incredible tool in the future to help you understand and what's happening with your firm and analyze uh, with the data that exists. 
more and more reports will be available over time. Right now, I'm going to jump back here to the overview of the reporting tool. Right now, there's a couple. You'll see you'll see the ones that said that say author uh, tax dome. This is the ones that are available to you right now. There's three primary ones. The one we just covered about tasks and job assignments. Uh, there is one for time utilization. So you can see how, uh, for example, when I click that, that looks at the hours that have been entered by my employees. And it, it can, for example, the first one here tells me a utilization. So it tells me of their hours available, how many how many of them were built or, or billable. It will give me you know statistics and numbers of every single one of the employees. I'm looking right now at a group of employees specifically, but you can have views that are specific for, you know, I don't know, a, a group of employees, a smaller group of employees, or have different dashboards for the different teams uh, within your practice. So there's really no limitation to what you can do with this tool. And again, I, have, I want you all have to to just, you know, look at this tool with a, with a very open mind, because if, again, the, the idea is if the data exists in the software, you can build a dashboard and analyze it with this reporting tool. We're gonna actually jump here to now the report designer. I would like you all to at least have an idea of how these reports are built. And so the report designer, I'm gonna, I'm gonna unpin the menu so there's more space on the screen. Hopefully this is uh, large enough so, so that it's clear. Um, should I make a quick pause here just to see if there's any questions about looking at the reports, maybe you know someone and see it. I don't see any questions about the reports yet. A couple of questions for you, Ross. We'll go over those in a couple of seconds, guys. Thank you. All right. Now the um, now the report designer is gonna on the left side of the screen. You're gonna see the available data points for your report. And for this example, let's just say I want to create a report that lets me look at the time that my staff entered uh, last week. Okay. Let, let's just say I wanna I wanna look at that or last month. I want to see time. I want to see hours. Maybe even I want to see what they worked on, right? So you, you, here on the left, you will have all of those data points. So here I'm, I'm actually going to search here, for example, time, and that's going to uh, pull all the uh, um, you know all the items available as far as time entries go. I'm particularly interested in understanding the number of hours the team worked. So I will I will pull that. I want to know also who is the assignee for the time. So if somebody entered three hours, I want to know who entered uh, the time. I could also, if I want it, I could look at the rates or bill, you know, billable amount uh, for those hours that were entered. Um, I could also, you know, here here's uh, those billable amounts. Uh, you can also compare billable hours with uh, total time entered. There's the time entry rate that will look at the uh, the rate by hour. Uh, for the time entry as well. There's different parameters like uh, whether the time entry has been, uh, you know, cleared from the web if, it, if, it's, if it's been invoiced uh, to, to someone. You can look at the tags, the state, when the time entry uh, finished, right? And, uh, or of course, when it started. I actually will uh, pull also the time entry started um, property or, or data point because well, that will help me understand um, the date when the time was, was entered and by who and how long that time entry was for. And I could add more, more to it, so I'll keep it, keep it simple. Uh, but I, I like to, I like you all to just kind of try this on your end. Even if you're not using the time tracking tool of Taxum, try, try, try doing this. Once you select the data points you want as columns uh, for your table, you can then hit the go button. That's going to, de to, to then well, it's gonna it's gonna do a couple of things, depending on on your on the type of report you wanna you wanna uh, create. It will give you either a graph or a table, and I'm not interested in, right now in a graph. Uh, this this is not helpful. I will click this button. That's gonna show me the actual table, right? You can also see this as a tool to create your own customized tables. So sometimes you know I'm gonna I'm gonna open a new tab here really quick. And I'm gonna look at jobs, right? Uh, just look at jobs here. Let me let me share the other tab. The jobs table has some columns that you can use, right? The the reports, all this data, by the way, uh, can be used in the reports. So if you want a specific table that, for example, looks at invoices uh, that are linked to certain jobs, 
or you want a specific report that looks at uh, time that was entered by job, by employee within a time range, you can use this, uh, this other tool here, this reporting tool uh, to create those customized tables. Now, in the report that I'm building right now, I'm just looking at time entered by employees. This is looking at all the historical data. That's why it's giving me this very long list of, of time. Now I will here, uh, let me just go ahead and, and change. I'm gonna look at the column here in the middle because I want to see here the the time bucket. I wanna change it to see the day of the week that this was entered. This is gonna help me uh, again, try to understand what day of the week this time was entered. And I don't, I don't just wanna look at the all historical time, right? I wanna look at the time entered last week. So the data points, all of them have this filter button to the right of them. If I look at, for example, the time entry started date, and I wanna just show the time entry last week, I need to use a filter on that data point. So it doesn't look at all the time entered historically. So here, for example, I can click the add filter button and uh, use a rolling filter. So I can say, all right, give me all the time that was entered. You know what, I'm gonna use this, um, this month or I'm gonna use last month so we have more more data uh, to show and just apply that from this well that then will if I hit go again okay so this here for example is already filtering by um, it's filtering by um, by the time range so we'll just look at time entered in August it's giving me that list of all the employees Bart Alberto Frankie Gabriel all the time entered by all these employees. Now, if I want to create an actual report to help me understand, let's say, all the time entered by day of the week by employee, right? I can then use the reporting tool again to create a different view of this data. More particularly, I think uh, you know, the, visualis the proper visualization for a report like this would be a uh, pivot table. So I can click this here and then say, OK, uh, if I want to see, let me just make this a little bit slightly bigger so you can see it more. This here, for example, is using the data uh, within the time entries to give me a breakdown of all the time entered. You know, it's looking at time la from last month, right? So this is, of course, not, you know, not, not potentially not, not as useful. But if I was looking at, for example, time last week, I could say, okay, you know, on Monday, out of, out of, out of our two didn't work any hours. Uh, Bart, uh, he entered two hours in the system. And um, you can take this again levels beyond and say you can if you want to see the work they did you can have sub uh sub items within each day of the week so you can see the tasks that were completed right so again if it as long as the data exists that's the whole idea if this if the data exists in the software you will be able to create a report on it hopefully that makes sense the, the final result is once you create reports in taxdom once you're able to kind of uh, see the data in a way you can understand it you pin those reports, you use this other uh, two buttons to then create a dashboard. I, I particularly created a dashboard for time reports. So if I go to my dashboards list here and uh, I look at here time reports, for example, this is again a, a uh, kind of a combination of all those reports that I created. So I can, I can, I can change the layout, I can create tabs. I, if I wanted to look at just one employee, I can have a specific filter for it. If I wanted to look at specific clients, I can I can create a filter for that too. Uh, and this is you know just one example of the reports. I'm gonna change the layout here so you can see it a little bit bigger uh, here. And just save that. And then here, for example, I have the hours track last month and then I have hours track this week, right? So hopefully this gives you an idea, but again, there's no limitation. Uh, and don't worry if you you know if you find this a little bit too difficult or if you if you're thinking oh this is gonna this is gonna take me a lot of time to learn, don't worry guys. What we're doing is we will add more reports, more and more reports that are gonna be in your system by default. So uh, you just I mean you just have everything that's industry standard. You won't have to really create anything unless you need very specific customization. And uh, well because this is a relatively new feature, only a few reports are available now, but more and more will be available over time. I'm gonna make a quick pause here, guys, once again, just uh, to see if there's any questions. Uh, I see qu a couple of questions here for uh, Ross. Give me one second. Let's look at to see if there's any questions about reports. 
Okay. Um, we have a question from from David. Edgar, how how would one send a report to identify pending tasks over one day pending and also over three days pending? Now, um, this is possible, David. I would encourage you to, you know, if you want to build this specifically, I would encourage you to schedule a meeting with our with our our support team. We have um, the reporting feature in Taxum has a a um, component called formulas, so you can basically you can basically use the data points in your columns to say, okay, if this task started three days from today's date, show this other thing, right? Or filter those tasks out or 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 only show those that meet the criteria, right? So there's formulas, there's different parameters you can create. You can use formulas that make those columns interact with each other, um, or you can use logic uh, with the columns too. You can, you can build very, very complex reports. The short answer is you could do it. Uh, if you want to build it, definitely reach out to our support team. We, we're happy to help you out, at least understand how it's built. All right. Okay. I see Lori have a question here about enabling the sources. Um, yes, if you click the enable multiple sources, right now the, the available sources for pulling data and creating a report are workflows and time. Well, I'm sorry, workflows, time, and billing. So anything time tracking related, anything billing related, or anything workflows related uh, can be used as a data point. And I'm talking about literally everything, everything related to those three items. So, you know, when jobs started, how long they've been in the stages, um, how long it took for a job, for a particular job to move from stage one to stage three. Okay, you can do, you can do very comprehensive analysis on this. Okay. Uh, some f a question here from Matt. Can I report on payments received? I just want a, a report of the payments received this month by by payment method. Not seeing data elements related to payments. The the answer to your question would be yes. Yes, you can. You can look at payments received. I am not entirely sure. I haven't seen it myself. If you can kind of break it down by payment method, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume yes. Uh, but we'll, uh, Matt, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure our team gets back to you on this one just to kind of confirm whether or not you can build it. Uh, and if so, again, same same answer as, as uh, you know, to what I said to David. Definitely reach out to our support team to make sure um, you know you have at least someone guiding you through the process of building it. All right. Yeah, uh, another question from Lori. Lori, yes, you if you record your time as you know hours, minutes, it, it, the reports are in decimal format. Yes, you can. Um, you would need to use the different. Um, the different ways to view the data. Each column has different um, ways to display the data. So if I'm looking at a date, I can say, okay, show me the date uh, in you know this format or this other format. Show me the day of the week it is. You know, there's there's different ways to view the data, but yes, you can, and you can do that by default too. Definitely add it to a dashboard as well. Um, if you want to build it, please go ahead and and, and reach out to our support team. We're happy to help you out. Okay, I see a couple more questions, but I think it's it's uh it would be it would be very helpful, guys, if we if we walk you through the uh, well. There's a couple of questions here pending here that are for you, Ross. I'm gonna share my my slides here one more time. I want to make sure the audience um, gets their questions addressed. So give me one second. All right, all right. So so we're gonna jump to the Q and A, uh, Ross. Somebody somebody had questions about your experience using AutoMove and and. I've experienced this myself. Okay, I, I have gone a little bit crazy with automation and with AutoMove, and that has, well, in in the past, it has caused experiences in which you know something goes wrong or a job auto moves, but it wasn't the time to auto move, and then there, we have to reiterate and change things. Uh, did you experience anything like that before? Yes, um, you know, just uh, just uh, on Monday, uh, I got a client that got uh, an auto move uh, on a stage where it was a delivery of a financial statement uh, stage, and they, they said uh, I, I didn't get the financial statement. Uh, and of course, it was on me to review. It should have been on me to review, but it was it was went to the stage of that it was complete, and uh, they got the email that it was delivered, and so I quickly reviewed reviewed it and sent it over to them. Um, but, uh, so yes, the, the, uh, the, um, they, they moved it, uh, they hit complete on, uh, they moved it to my stage and hit complete and moved it past me. So, um, you know, it, it, it 
it can it can get moved to the wrong stage or auto moved and and uh, if you complete the wrong person's task so they they completed my task so really it wasn't an auto move issue it was more along the stage they completed my task instead of their own task uh, um, but but it was an auto move it, it was an auto move issue um, that not really a software issue but but still the auto the auto Mason worked against us there, um, but, but it was easily remedied. Definitely. And there's, there's another question I found pretty interesting about um, how are you managing it, the tasks, uh, you know, this, you know, one of a kind projects uh, for notices that, re that your clients receive anything from you know, IRS, state departments. How are you, if you are managing it through tax, yep. how is that happening? Uh, yeah, we we set up um, you know jobs projects um, for for our all of our IRS notices. Um, you know we're we're a firm believer that you know just like we we believe we set up you know for new, for prospects we want those set up in our CRM. But we we, we believe that you know we want to we we set up you know jobs and projects and uh, pipelines for our for our IRS notices for you know our audits, sales tax audits or payroll tax audits or IRS audits, whatever they are. Um, you know, we're, we're going to set those up and, and run those through, you know, our system so that we can, you know, track them and, you know, you know, make, make job comments and, and, you know, we're, we're going to do engagement letters on those and, and we're going to, you know, run those through the office, just like any other job. I mean, we're doing engagement letters and we're doing invoices and, and, and everything else. So we're, we're going to, we're going to treat them just like a tax return or a bookkeeping engagement. Awesome. Thank you very much. And another question about your uh, more of a more of, more about your protocols out thing, but a question here for us. How long do you typically keep your accountants uh, interns in a certain role, such as a preparer, organize work papers, reviewers, etc.? Uh, is it a time based position for your firm or more of a how much you can how much work you can handle <laughs> type of position approach? Um, so you know, we, um, we definitely, we, we, we try, you know, we're in Orlando. So UCF, uh, is real, is close by and it's a, it, they've got a nice big accounting program. So we always try to hire, you know, two to three, uh, you know, interns every uh, tax season. And then we, that's our hiring pool every year. And, and, um, you know, within a couple of years, we, we do try to promote out of that, uh, um, pool. And so within a couple of years, um, and so we, 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 um, we always, uh, we always feel like, uh, our interns within a couple of years, we have them review each other's work. Um, and so what we'll do is within a couple, within a couple of years, uh, you know, the interns will usually, if we hire them, of course, they become a staff accountant and, and, uh, and so, uh, if they prepare the corporate return, uh, the, they'll, they'll, if we've got three or four at any given time, staff accountants, um, a first review will will happen between between them um, before it will go up to a manager, and then that way we're we're slowly um, training them on as well as you know preparation, but you know how to review um, before it goes up to a manager. So usually by the time it makes it to a manager, the returns in in pretty good condition. Awesome, thank you very much. I think Ross, uh, you know, I, I think time time is you know permitting today to do like a just a quick you know 10 minutes of just a open discussion with uh with our attendees today so if you any of you guys uh would like to activate your microphone and have you know ask questions or ask us to share a screen and, and talk about something specific of the software just you just have a couple of questions for us uh you're i mean you're able to to, to use the q a to, to let us know you want to activate your microphone or i think our team can also enable the functionality to let you raise your hand if you can uh, react. Um, let's just, uh, if you guys want to activate your microphone, please let us know in the Q and A. You know, let us know, and our team's going to activate your microphone so you can, you know, you can ask questions. Uh, we're going to let you guys do that in a couple of seconds. Uh, Erica, I see your question here. So about the reminders for the tasks. Now, there, there's a couple of ways reminders fire off on the firm side. Now. When when I talk about reminders, I want just going to be more specific. Those are those are emails or notifications sent to your inbox plus, right? So reminders fire off when your tasks are assigned to you. If you look at if you look at uh, the tasks specifically, right? 
here I'm going to pull up the, the Help Center page so you can see what I'm talking about. The tasks will send reminders on, on various uh, circumstances. Now, when, when a task is assigned to you, it, you get you get notified when the task is well, well when when it's when it is actually assigned you get an email or a notification in your inbox. You also get notifications when a task is approaching its due date. So if you have made a task and uh, you created a task and you assign it to yourself, but it hasn't started or its due date is let's say a week from now, you are going to get notifications uh, when the the due date is approaching on the task if the status is is the same in progress or you know the the, uh, the the it's not if it's not complete or canceled basically so i'm gonna have our team here reply to your question with the help center article that explains all the notifications that fire off with the tasks uh but this will be you know kind of the, you know one of the ways you can start um strategizing on whether or not your staff gets notified about their pending to do's right just signing the right due dates uh understanding the statuses of the tasks believe it or not that the statuses have logic behind there's there's you know programming on each and every single status and different things happen depending on the status of the task so our team's gonna help you out um, with the link to the article so you can read you know everything of all the details about it uh, but let me know if you have any follow-up questions thank you um, all right David has uh, questions here for Ross David I will ask my technical team so to activate your microphone uh, if you're using a browser it will ask you for your permission to um, to let the browser access your microphone, so please make sure you accept that. And then uh, after you you grant permission, you can you're gonna be able to unmute yourself. David, I think your microphone should be enabled now. Try to unmute and feel free to ask your question. Hello, David. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you now. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. Hey, Edgar. Hey, Russell. Uh, Hello. My questions are related to doing business returns. Uh, specifically for Schedule C, E, and F. Do you, he, he muffled out for me quite a bit, Edgar. Can you repeat his question, or did you hear him? Uh, David, I, I think I, I think I think I understand your your question. But let me know. Let me just make sure that we we both we're, you know we're all we're all on the same page here. So what you're mm -hmm. asking is um, how Russ handles you know having like clients with a Schedule C. You know, would you have a separate pipeline for that, or would that would you you know would you be using the same pi pipeline? Or just how do you handle all these different types of of, of returns or clients that you that, that sure. you know? Um, we're we're going to handle it by entity, and so if it's a if it's a if it's a sole proprietor, um, you know, and we're doing bookkeeping, and there's a bookkeeping engagement, um, then then we may um, at that point you know have it under its own um, account in tax dome. So if we're doing significant amount of work for it. Then we may create its own account and and tag that as a sole proprietor. Um, you know the same thing. You know these days, you know most of our clients we're not putting, you know we're not holding rental properties in you know by them. You know they're in single member LLCs or or, or you know some type of entity these days. So we're going to have those in separate entities and in, in in single. So they're going to be separate accounts and single member LLCs. So so we we will we will have those separately, but but um if 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 not if they're just a rental that they own individually you know we're we're gonna we're just gonna have those in our document management we're gonna have separate folders and and uh and do the you know do the bookkeeping and, and the document management and and just you know if there's 10 rentals we're gonna have uh foldering systems and bookkeeping and and folders under under the individual file um and just and just track it that way um and, and handle it from within the the 1040 um, you know engagement you know and handle it within you know that engagement letter and and uh, and and you know handle the the, the tax return and and uh, and how we you know quote it and bid it and everything there. Do you do you invoice them separately or do you still tuck everything for the invoice under the 1040? Yeah, I, I, I'm on them. You know, I'm, I, it depends on the, you know, when I, when I would look at it, I most likely I would, you know, depending on how they were structured, if I would, I would probably, you know, bill them an hourly rate, you know, and I would probably, I would just have to see it, but, you know, usually I don't, I don't know that I've got anybody in, in, you know, in that, you know, exact situation, but yeah, we would, you know, we, we, 
we quote it out and then I, I would I would quote out you know how much we're going to charge per per you know the bookkeeping for that and I would and I would build that in so that would be one of those where we would quote what we're going to build the bookkeeping and and remember we use custom fields um and so and so in our in our um engagement letter we would we would put that pricing in that custom field for how much we're going to charge so i would i would just have i wouldn't break it out i would i would just have if that's going to be you know whatever if i thought that was going to be thirty five hundred dollars and i that's what i would you know break it out in the engagement letter but in then in my email you know or in my you know chat with them you know i might discuss what you know what all we're doing but in my actual engagement letter so that i can automate my engagement letters i'm you know i'm just putting you know a price i'm putting the custom field pricing in there okay yeah i, I did it the way you're describing until i got a client a disregarded entity that had 25 million in revenue and then i broke them out even even though they still reported on their 1040. so yep. that's where i get a little torn is you know at what point do you justify splitting them and so i was just yeah i i struggle with that too yeah yeah thank you all okay. right thank you very much for that question david i appreciate that um how is uh how about, there's a couple more questions here russ so uh, for the let me just pull it up here you can maximize it so uh, do you use functionality like locking tax returns to an invoice so that it becomes available after uh, payments? Yes, absolutely. And, um, I, you know, we rarely do we get pushback on it. I mean, we've got some long term clients that we just know are going to pay. Um, and so we 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 don't do it. But but um, for the most part, um, you know, we, we, we absolutely do it. Um, and really any new clients we're, we're, we're signing engagement letters and getting paid before we begin work. So we're, we're, you know, heading in that direction on, on anybody that's, that's, that we bring on any new business anyway. So we're, we're for the most part, and we've already got, like we said yesterday, we're already trying to be year end retainer on most of our business clients, many of our 1040 clients. And so we should, you know, we really should be working from a standpoint of getting getting paid for our work, um, you know, up front or, or at least, you know, one of the things we really try to do is is get a payment method on file. Um, we we use CPA charge. We you know tax dome integrates with CPA charge and Stripe, and both ways you can you can get a payment method on, uh, on file um, with with both of those merchants and and uh, and either get fifty percent retainer and, and get authorization to to complete your charge at at completion. So if I don't get paid a hundred percent up front, if I decide you know it's a you know if I'm gonna if it's a ten thousand dollar charge and I'm gonna you know, get five thousand up front, and then five thousand uh, at completion. I'm gonna get. I'm still gonna get a, a, a payment authorization through CPA charge. You know, I'll I'll create the uh, the authorization through through CPA charge. It's just a, an email link that you send through CPA charge that that get that they give you your their uh, either their banking info or their credit card info, and so that you run that card. Uh, and, and my admin team just sends that out to them, and they. You know, as, and so we we when we send them our engagement letter, so those will be new clients. We'll get that payment authorization, and then when that expires, you know, my team, you know, CPA charge tracks that, and when those those uh, credit cards expire, once he, you know, whatever they do, whenever they come up, my my team reaches out to them and says, hey, your account on file is getting ready to expire, and we need to update that in CPA. We do that through CPA charge, and we keep those up up you know updated. So the vast majority of our accounts, we have a payment method on file. It's fantastic. Uh, I, I, I think there's a lot of, you know, when I, when I work in new firms and I let them know, hey, you should start totally doing this, you know, get, get paid first. I think it's, I think it's more pushback on the firm side uh, than on the client side oftentimes. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely good results always. Every, every single time I implemented this with new users, the results have yeah. always been more positive than they have been negative. So, yeah, so if I sign up a client right now, I'm basically saying, you know, if they, they come in for 2023 and I do their return, I'm signing them for 2023. And then my engagement letter is going to say, I'm, you know, I'm going to do your 2024 tax return and then I'm going to do your year end fee for 2024. 
and I'm going to draft it on January 15th of 2024. Um, if I get pushed back, then, then I'll accept a payment method on file and I'll draft it on completion of the return, you know, and then I'll in, but I rarely get pushed back. I mean, I mean, I rarely, and, and that just tells me, you know, what, if they're going to fight me on payment, then I know what I'm dealing with. Usually if I say in my engagement letter, you know, this is going to be the fee for 2023 and on, and then going forward, you know, that I'm quoting your 2024 and on January 15th, this is your year in personal fee and your year in corporate fee. And we're drafting these both on, I'm, I'm drafting you up front on 2023 and on January 15th, I'm drafting you up front and I'm going to do your tax planning in December and I'm going to do this and I'll lay out what my charges are going to be. I'm transparent. I tell them exactly what I'm going to do, when I'm going to charge it. Um, and, um, and then I'm not going to beat them up if I go over a little bit of budget on time. So they're going to get that from me. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to come back and, and hit them on the other side if I'm five hours over on time, but they know, but I am getting paid up front, you know, um, you know, so, so I, I don't have that, that headache. And, and so January 15th comes in and, and I'm drafting their account or unless they're a monthly account, if we're doing bookkeeping as we go, then I'm starting right away to draft, you know, 2024 and I'm catching them up for the year. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Ross. Uh, I think, you know, we're going to wrap things up here, guys. Um, we, um, uh, we are going to continue answering questions tomorrow. See some questions about reports tomorrow. We're going to, we're going to be talking about, about best practices, uh, overall. And, uh, and I see a lot of, you know, a lot of room for us to just continue discussing reports and some of the things that you could potentially, um, you know, just, just build for analysis in your practice. Now, um, before we, we, we wrap things up, I saw Kaylee. Kaylee, if you want to activate your microphone still, um, let us know, please. If you, I see you, I saw your your comment. I think your, our team's gonna is gonna activate your microphone. If you still wanna uh, wanna unmute, you should be able to. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. Good. Um, so kind of going back to um, the question I had asked previously. Um, uh, Russell, you mentioned that you had that situation uh, this week with the auto move and the financial statements. And Edgar, you also mentioned that you had experienced troubles with uh, auto move occasionally in the past. Um, were there any spots or any stages in the process that you consistently saw uh, troubles with auto move? And were there um, you know, solutions that you found work the best for that? Yeah. So, so in my experience, there's, there's one, you know, there's one specific situation that I think has, uh, I've stumbled upon multiple times, which, uh, it, it is, it's actually very similar to what happened to, to Ross, uh, to what Ross described. Um, when, when you make, when you're, when in your firm, you are giving your team members access to see everything that, that really means everything, right? So they'll see all the tasks. Uh, they'll see all the clients, they'll see all the jobs, right? So there's definitely, you you just, you just open, you open room. I mean, yes, you know, being able to see everything is great because you can then filter and still get things, you know, get your relevant uh, data that you want to see. Uh, but when you don't do it, then there's room for, for error. So what I've experienced is uh, there's, you know, hundreds of tasks getting created. Um, Russ, you just experienced it this morning. I assigned you, I assigned you like, 50, 100 tasks, right? So you, you got bombarded with emails, right? And so you want you want you want to just understand what happens when you do. Number one, you do things in bulk with the pipeline. So if, if you're going to be moving jobs in bulk from from one stage to the other, and the next stage is going to trigger a task, where well, your colleagues are going to get notifications for that, right? So that's number one thing. The other thing is if if the employees are able to see all the tasks, so that means when they go to the tasks list, they will see just everything. And uh, if they misclick or they change the status, uh, those, I mean, yeah, you can put the status back to where it was, but the auto move would have at that point already happened, triggering the next uh, stage in the pipeline. So yeah, it is, it has to do with, you know, kind of human error, but it's again, different ways to, to, to prevent it. It's just me, you know, making sure your staff only has access to do, uh, to view, you know, their clients at, at certain stages. Uh, I know you Ross use the updating account access all the time too, to, to make sure your staff, you know, gets notified, they, they're assigned to the right clients as, uh, as well. 
So it has to do with that. The other the other situation I can I can also tell you about Kaylee is I have uh, in the past um, not by mistake. I think this is this is just something we, that happens when you get I guess too excited with automation. Uh, but for example, if it's your, if this is your first year where you're going to do a mass communication with clients, right? And you're, you're going to send perhaps hundreds of emails or hundreds of chat messages, right? You have to think your template for the message very well. What's happened to me in the past is I've, I've, I've sent, um, hundreds of messages with firms and then we forgot, uh, you know, a minor thing in the, in the chat, maybe, you know, maybe it was instructions for them to activate their account or, uh, it was maybe, you know, we maybe wanted to set up, set expectations better. And we didn't, right? So you cannot just, you you can't you can't cancel it doing bulk or or what automates, right? So those are the two things I, I you know I would say about about you know being cautious with automation. Yeah. Great. And um, Russ, did you experience any uh, stages where you consistently saw um, you know issues with the auto move? Um, no, I think. Um... I think we probably underused auto move. I mean, I, I told this to Ed, Edgar when we were when he first started looking at my um, my my pipeline. Um, you know, we 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 primarily are using auto move between the uh, prepare manager partner and the um, signature page to completion stage. Um, maybe the client organizer to the or, organized work paper stage. You know, so there's a few stages where it's just real natural to move it between, but I'm, I'm not using auto move, you know, just everywhere. So there's some stages I feel like it's really natural. And then I don't use it. I don't have it clicked across all 16 stages. Let's just put it that way. You know, I don't, I don't want it auto moving in those early stages. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm moving it, you know, because it's so easy to just manually move if you want to move, you know, all, all of them at once. So so I, my first four stages, I'm moving it manually because I want to I want to determine what day that those are going to happen, you know. And so, you know, it's I, I think uh, we, we, we don't have them all auto moving. That's for sure. Great. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks so much. Thank you for your question, Keely. Oh, amazing. All right. That's going to gonna wrap things up, guys. Thank you for all the questions. We're going to continue answering questions tomorrow as well. Today we had, a, you know, we had a great conversation about jobs and tasks. Um, we want you guys to understand there's multiple views for managing your work. Uh, you will want to, I think, always compare what you're currently doing. If you're if you're going to start using Taxum to manage your work, um, just you know, go slowly and try to adopt it uh, similarly, and just kind of use a similar approach to what you're currently doing. If you're using an Excel sheet, uh, you're using a program that gives you a table with all the tasks list and. In the statuses, you may want to use the table, uh, uh, you know, the table view on the on the jobs and tasks too within Taxdom. So, there's different ways to use a platform. We talk about team management as well. There's different ways to get notified by your, you know, about your work, notify your clients about your work too. Um, and then we just kind of again briefly described and went over the reporting feature. Tomorrow, we'll cover it in more detail. I feel like there was there were a couple questions that we left, you know, unaddressed. Um, because of time, but it will, I will make sure we cover those tomorrow, guys. When we, you know, talk talk more about the potential of it. And like I said, uh, don't worry if a lot of reports are not available. We will continue to add more and more uh, with the time. All right. Now, um, again, once again, before we leave, there are multiple sources for where you can get support or help. We do have a help center you can access by going to uh, help.taxdom.com. Every single feature has its own page. And you can find every detail on how to use the features in the Help Center. We have videos as well. We have a YouTube library. So if you need you know, visual uh, support on how to use the feature, we do have a YouTube library. Uh, we do webinars. We'll continue to do more webinars, guys, on how to set up your accounts. Uh, this is more of an advanced training for users that have been using Taxum for at least a couple of months. But we will have webinars that are more for uh, kind of beginners or, or, or new, new users in Taxum. So Rest assured, we will cover those areas too. Uh, we have an academy full of courses and a certification as well that you can get by completing the courses. So definitely recommend going through the courses, especially if you're looking at specific components of the software. Uh, I still to this day talk to, to talk to prospects, people that are new to Taxdom, and maybe you just want to use you know get started with Taxdom using a specific component. If it could be the workflow, it could be 
uh, document sharing, could be, you know, something specific. And rest assured, we do have academy courses for every single aspect of the software too. And lastly, you can reach us, uh, reach our support team. There's three different channels for communication with our support team. We um, do, um, we have chat, so you can go to the chat uh, and, and you text them. If you go your, to your portal, on the top of your screen, you'll see the, you'll see the help button. You can uh, start a conversation with our team or send us an email to success at taxdom.com. Lastly, you can also, of course, schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings with our support team. So those of you that were asking about how to build reports, how to add parameters, because you, know, you want to understand the feature better, right? Um, definitely schedule a time with our support team, especially, again, if you're looking at building a specific report uh, for your team. And uh, lastly, I want to thank personally again, Russ, for your time, your feedback, your insights have been all amazing. So thank you for being here with us. Thank you for to our technical team and our audience as well to you know for for attending the webinar. Russ, anything, anything you wanna you wanna share with the audience? Yeah. Thanks, Edgar. Thanks, everyone. I look forward to tomorrow. I'll uh, see you guys tomorrow then. All right. Bye bye.